Hello everyone, welcome to our Countryside Q&A. I am so sorry for the delay, we just had some technical issues. Um, I'm here with one of our lecturers um, in, from our land based team, um, Meg, who will be here to answer your questions today um, and I can answer some of your questions as well. So please pop any questions you've got in the chat um, and we'll do our best to get them answered. So James has asked what practicals will we be allowed to do? Well, with the countryside management, it's really diverse because you've got both um, sort of the wildlife side of things and then you've got the ecology and the surveys. It links a little bit into agriculture. It links in, links in a little bit to horticulture. So you've got loads. Oh, the practicals are immense. So um, I often see the I Sorry, just to introduce myself, I teach agriculture mainly, um, but these technical difficulties have just jumped in. Um, so I often see the countryside students um, all kitted out in their still gear and their PPE off to do chainsawing. They do surveys. Um, I know at the right time of year they do crayfish trapping, which is always quite an interesting one. Um, the size of the crayfish as well. Um, we've got the we've got a reek side, uh, a river that runs through the campus. Um, so the lecturers are always sort of in there in their waders pulling things out. Um, and they also do obviously the the habitat management side of things as well. So establishing um, like beetle banks. Um, I, sure you guys will have seen on social media our coverage on agroforestry as well so we've got uh, that's all of the uh, land-based industries jumping in on that one but you will be establishing trees and hedgerows um getting involved in a bit of grassland and um, herbal lays as well so real diverse um yeah one minute you're swinging a chain safely using a chainsaw um, and uh, the next minute you're you're jumping along um, on the on the tractor or, or knee deep in mud and rivers and ponds um, and all sorts so there's loads of practicals that go on um, with the countryside course it's quite interesting not that I'd ever tell the countryside management lecturers that but it is a good course to do it's good fun <laughs> Um, gosh, we've got lots and lots of questions coming in. Oh, so, no. um, <laughs> um, one is about our facilities. So maybe we could just talk about uh, our Brooksby campus and how fantastic it is. Yeah, well, yeah. So Megs just took the words out of my mouth. It is. Um, it's an amazing campus. It's 850 acres, um, and obviously that's a mix between the equine and um, you've got the farm on there as well. But knitted within it is all those hedgerows um, and things like that. So and the river. Um, we've also got a lovely train line as well, so you get to see the odd choo-choo. Um, the, the facilities itself within the college, so if we talk about the Jutland building, um, it was solely made for land-based students. Um, you've got downstairs, um, we've got sort of workshop-like classrooms, so you've got big roller doors where you can pull things in, um, you get sort of not necessarily the cleanest of classrooms, um, but that's where you sort of half practical, half classroom element lessons are done. Um, we've also got um, like the tractor sheds and things like that, where your machinery is prepped um, and all your chainsaws are kept all nice and shiny and sharp um, and all the tools there. Then the facilities as well, just as an add on, you've got the college gym that you can jump into um, if in lunch breaks um, with COVID allowances and things um, and yeah just amazing grounds and sort of state of the art up to date buildings um, and classrooms to really sort of make you feel at home but make you feel like you're there and you know we, we you're there to learn and it, it just all adds into that we've got big classrooms big computer rooms at the top open access areas fab library as well um, if you go in old school and reading a couple of books um, but yeah no it's it's a it's a quite a it's quite a like cute campus as well so it's massive but you've got little pockets of students sort of all over the place as well so that makes it feel quite homely as well as sort of ticking all the boxes of what you need to study here Lovely, thank you. Definitely agree with that. Um, we've had a few questions come through about work experience. So I know that's one of the modules of all of our land-based courses. Um, we can talk yeah. about that. Yeah, <laughs> so work experience. So it's um, it's 150 hours minimum for the work experience side of the module. You are out in industry, so that relates to what your your you know, so countryside management we're chatting about here. So you're sort of looking at, you know, possibly tree surgery, ecology, ecology surveys and things like that. You go out. Um, we work quite closely with the Wildlife Trust and the tree one, which I can't remember off the top of my head, but they do lots of trees and stuff. Um, so we're, we, you go out and basically 
um, how it sort of works, and it'll, you'll get this sort of as you go, you'll hear this repeated quite a lot, is you guys find your placement. Um, we have got we have got people here that will support you. There is a work experience department who have contacts as well if you're struggling. But you go out, you approach the employers, you find your placement, you bring in a green form that basically has got the details of the placement, you know, permission from parents and guardians if needed. Um, we do a risk assessment or health and safety check on that employer um, and just have a chat with them so they know what they've got to, what they're there for, and they're helping you get a bit of experience in, in the industry um and sort of more so you know where you want to go once you graduate from college um and then yeah then you, you can start counting your hours you're more than welcome to have more than one placement if you want a bit of more diversity and to see different things and um, the more hours you do the better because it's all about you developing yourself as as a student and as a person so yeah you then have to write it up obviously uh, there's a bit of college work there's a bit of paperwork there you just have to write it up um, when you get back and sort of document what you've done um, but it's a really interesting thing the stories that come back like they've I'm quite envious of this work experience opportunities that all the students are given by employers in our local area so and there's so much about so yeah it's a really really good module lovely thank you um, another question are the practical elements of of the courses assessed um, or is it just the theory that's assessed that's an oh these good questions come in through thank you so um yes it's oh, I, had, I wanted to say it in such a, a non-animal care way but there's so many ways to skin a cat with assessments at, uh, through a college course um yeah sorry animal care um you you can you do you are judge not judge you are assessed both practically so as lecturers we can observe you you then also assess through your written work so writing of um, essays or presentations as well we assess you and um, we also do it through quizzes and um, there's a couple of exam based modules as well but don't be scared of them um, they're okay we're, we're, we're in, in the thick of it now and students are really taking that up and um, so yeah it's not like Coming to a vocational college is not not like eight levels. You're not sat at a desk. I'm not not downsizing any levels or anything, but they're quite sort of academically heavy, classroom heavy. This is very much sort of vocational is experiencing things. So you're out. There's conversations. We've got guest speakers that come in and have a chat as well as us going out on trips as and when. And they all link in back to your assessments. So you're well prepared when those assessments come. Lovely, thank you very much. Uh, got loads of questions, bear with me while I just pick one out. Um, so, uh, someone's asked with the gamekeeping element, I'm not sure if you'll know about this, Meg, um, will, is, it, will, is it for sport or is it just for the animal's benefit? So, um, I don't really oh, know. Oh, okay, that. right, okay. So, um, horses for courses. Um, with regards to the gamekeeping there are modules that do gamekeeping there are gamekeeping modules within very much focusing on the level two countryside management um but with the gamekeeping it links into the environment and animal welfares and you know the the can't think of that word but making sure that all of the different levels of the environment like stack up so with the gamekeeping, I mean, I'm almost teaching it in a really weird sort of way, but you have to look after your environment to be able to look after your birds and then to be able to have that sport. Again, pheasant is eaten, so it's just the same as farming, but the animals have so much more freedom um, when they're out in the fields. So um, we're taking it back to the academic side of it. You do cover the gamekeeping modules um, at Brooksby. Um, as I say, level two does a whole game more sort of focused on the gamekeeping there. Um, and then the level three as well, we're going to get game as like deer management as well and things like that, that we, we go into in quite some depth. I hope that answered yeah. that one. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, a bit Sorry. <laughs> um, I'm just popping the application form link in the um, Q&A because I've had a couple of people ask how to apply, when we can apply. Um, we are yeah, taking applications yeah. now for next September, so please do get your applications in. And with regards to this sort of application process um, and interviews and things, you do speak to the, the lecturers themselves that teach those modules. Countryside is becoming increasingly popular at Brooksby. Um, I'm obviously being an ag agricultural person, I'm very much pushing ag students, but countryside is sort of clipping at our heels in terms of numbers. Um, so we've got really nice sort of diverse group. It's boys and girls um, and we're all, you know, 
the, the countryside is becoming more and more popular. I say we recently put in this year, we've put in level two countryside management. So more of an entry. If you're a practical person, but you, you haven't and you haven't quite got those grades for the level three, there's that level two option to go in there as well. And that's also a really nice like taster of countryside management, um, as I say, because it's quite practical with the state skills. There's the gamekeeping module. There's a bit of science, sports, uh, sports science plant science in there as well and, and soil science as well so you're understanding that so you're getting a little bit of a taster of everything before you sort of decide right okay level three is for me lovely thank you very much um we've had a question about the level three actually um saying you offer the two full-time level three courses one being one year the other is two years what's the difference um so basically the two-year courses um, are like a full level three, aren't they? Um, the equivalent of three A-levels. Um, so if you wanted to go on to higher education, you could do that. Um, but you do get a full qualification after the first year, basically. Yeah, I don't know okay. if you want to add anything to that, Meg. No, definitely. So you're in and amongst. Um, so the level three, year one, whether you're choosing to do the one-year course or the two-year course, you're amongst, you, the, the modules are the same. So you're in the same lessons. It's just, as I say, whether at the end of the year, you then decide to you know, stick with it another year and, and learn even more and develop, as I say, maybe onto university. Or um, you just think, right, work experience has gone, gone so well, they've offered me a job and then you're straight into industry. That is an option for you as well. Or you can do what I quite like is if you can then start, jump over and maybe study agriculture as well. That'd be great. <laughs> Lovely. Um, let's have a look. Um, We've had a few questions about careers um, and what kind of job areas that students can go into uh, once they finish the course. Yeah, um, I will do my best to answer it. As I say, just referring again, I'm from an agricultural background. So, uh, but working alongside the countryside lecturers, it seems pretty diverse. It's very, very interesting. You've got those transferable skills as well. So you're not just, you know, once you've done a countryside course, you have to hug trees. You're not there. You can go into surveys, like eco ecology, such big words, ecological stuff. Um, and then there's also the practical side. So yeah, we've got that gamekeeping. You've got deer management. Um, and then also sort of on the, on the data analysis and field mapping. With regards to sort of the link between countryside and agriculture, it's becoming ever so much closer. It's not just you hug trees and we feed cows. It's very much we work together to make sustainable and healthy environment that we all live in. Um, and that's very much where Brooksby is marrying up. So going back over the agroforestry, um, we're doing that, linking all of those up to make a sustainable and, you know, environmentally friendly and uh, field, um, hopefully the whole of college, but um, marrying them all up as well. So uh, yeah, it's in terms of career progression, I'm sure there'll be people shouting, but they can do this and you can do that. There is so much you can do from a land based course. It's a really solid footing up into any career that you then choose to go to. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, this is a more sort of general uh, question about um, college life. Can you study and uh, work at the same time so um, I guess that means with the timetable does it give you an opportunity to have like a part-time job? Yeah fab um, thanks for these questions they're really really good and I hope when you guys come to study with us you ask such those sort of questions as well so with regards to um, the course um, oh, I've lost my flow just jump in Meg <laughs> ask me the question again I've lost my flow sorry um, yeah no it's just about whether you can have like a part-time job um, and oh, study. oh god yeah right days of the week we study let's go for that then so um <laughs> with regards to days of the week this three uh, it obviously covid makes everything a bit ooh, but um at the moment it's a three day a week course that's whether it's level two or level three now the theory being oh it says it's full time but it's only three days well you still have your, your week is still full. So if you do three days at college, um, you do one day in your work experience placement and then you've got one day there. So you've got time away where you can really sit and do your written assessments, your assignments, um, you know, prep your presentations if that's how you're being assessed. So one day at home sort of studying and learning, one day on work experience and then you've obviously got your three days in college and your lectures and doing your practicals. So it is still a full time course. Uh, again, if COVID sort of hits in and we squeeze it down into a two day course, you've got that extra time for your assignments or your your um, your work experience. Or if you're managing your time and you don't mind working a weekend, you've obviously got that time there if you could get a part time job and a little bit more income for you. 
Lovely, thank you very much. Uh, we're quickly running out of time. We've got so many questions to get through. Um, someone's asked, are the class sizes big? No, um, again, because of COVID, they can't be. So that's sort of, but even before then they weren't. You tend to have um, sort of classroom sizes are sort of between 15 and maybe 20, um, but this year they're not, they're even less than that. Um, and then practicals, there's no more than 10 on a practical, um, just simply for the old health and safety job. Um, but the, the classes are quite sort of intimate so to speak um that you've got to say like 10 or 15 of you in the classes at the moment um and you're all sort of learning the same you've all shown the same interest because you're on the same course so the conversations are very supportive and 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 they're quite pleasant classrooms to be in it's not that school mentality where you're you're sort of i'm in here because i have to be everyone's there because they want to be and that's what makes brooks be such a friendly place to be and study as well as the classrooms are really interesting and the conversations that are had in there amongst the lecturer and amongst your peers aid you as well um, into being the best you can be. Uh, thanks Meg. Um, so oh I'm just going to clarify something for Ollie um, about the level three course um, with it being two years. Um, yeah so if you did the one year level three um, you would have the option of continuing on to the second year of the course because um, as Meg said before the modules for um, those who are studying the two-year course and they're just doing the first year are exactly the same as those who are just doing um, the one-year course. So if you just wanted to apply for the one-year course um, and then at first then you could then continue on to the second year um, at the end if you change your mind halfway through and you want to continue. Um, so don't worry about that. Um, we generally um, say just apply for the two year course um, because basically everyone gets put on the same course to start with anyway. Yeah. Um, someone has said, is the course only for young people? Do we have mature students? Um, yeah, good question. Again, keep them coming. So um, with regards to um, is it only young people that study? No, um, in fact, countryside management in terms of other land based courses has the highest number of mature learners in there. We often have up to five or six mature learners alongside the five or six younger ones. Um, and because of that, it, it's it creates a really nice really healthy dynamic um not to say that the young ones are naughty and to stereotype because countrysiders aren't but those mature learners have got that direction and just pull that class up a little bit in terms of like the how much they sort of absorb and how much you guys learn um because they're sort of maybe piping in with experiences they've had before their studies so in terms of sort of mature learners and younger learners it's a real mixed bag it's particularly in countryside management um and i do hope that the the mature learners that i sort of see around are, are having a good time they do they come back for the second year so that's always a good sign and we've got mature learners with us now but mature doesn't mean like a proper old can i just add that as well so being in my 30s if i went back to study i would count as a mature learner so please don't call us like matures and we're old um but yes you there is a, a real nice mix um particularly within countryside and it creates as i say a really healthy learning environment. Lovely, thank you very much, Meg. Um, sorry, I'm just answering questions in the chat as we go. Oh, thank um, you. A few people have been asking about um, course fees, so I thought I'd just um, quickly say. Oh, yeah, I that. don't know anything about <laughs> course fees. I'll rule myself out on um, that one. I am by no means an expert, but um, I <laughs> do believe if you are 18 or younger when you start the course, um, it's fully funded by the government. Yeah. Um, and then if you are 19 plus um, you either have to pay course fees um, or if you're studying a level three course there is something called the advanced learner loan which I would definitely recommend looking into because um, it basically works the same way as a student loan for university so you get the loan paid directly to the college for your course fees um, and then you don't start paying anything back till you've completed the course and you are earning um, over a certain amount basically it just comes out automatically from your paycheck um, as a substantive so again, very similar to university student loans. Um, I'll try and put a link to some more information about that in the chat that you can have a look as well. Um, but do email our course inquiries team who will be able to forward your inquiries to our finance team who will also be able to help. And uh, just to pipe in for pushing social media as well. So um, like Meg, everything Meg says is right, but I know you guys will have might have seen, well, might have seen that Boris 
the prime minister at the moment um had said about um sort of aiding mature learners to go back to college so there might be more funding pots becoming available um for next year's studies fingers crossed it comes in that quickly um so if you are a mature learner follow the social media contact course inquiries and if there are any updates we will be straight on it and be able to update you as well so there might be even more support out there if you're a mature learner or over 18 um coming back um, and looking at education and again talking about those mature learners do not be scared of the classroom it's so much more enjoyable when you're older um, and you've not sort of burnt out from school and you've had that time away so yeah if those available honestly have a look at it contact the brooksby the inquiries team and they will help you with all the updates as well that were coming through yeah absolutely uh second all of that um so um someone's asked what day does what time does the college day start and finish? Um, and I think. OK, so actually. college day starts at 9.30 and finishes at 4.30. Um, if you are using the college buses on the college transport, I mean, obviously that gives you time to get, um, we give you time to get back up to the bus stops um, and things like that. So it does still feel like quite a long day, even though you're only in the classroom sort of 9.30 up to um, sort of 4.30. But again, with the transports, it can make for a longer day. Lovely, I'm just putting a link to our transport in the chat because um, I know that's something that a lot of people ask about. Um, so if you're really interested in this course, but you think it's a little bit um, too far for you or your parents won't be able to bring you, we have our own college buses, so definitely check those out. And we also have on-site accommodation. So I'll pop a link in the chat to that as well. So um definitely check those out they're fantastic we've not got long left unfortunately um so let's just see if i've got any new ones coming through <laughs> someone said should they do ag or countryside <laughs> so we know oh, what okay, <laughs> do what your heart tells you um, and but <laughs> agriculture is next on the q and a so please feel welcome to join and then i'll tell you that ag is the best course at brooksby but um i'll get sacked if i say that on this one <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah absolutely join us for that one we um, are going to have to end this here and um, we hope we've answered all of your questions if not um, and you've got some further questions or um, you didn't feel quite confident enough to ask your questions in the live um, chat, I'll put our email address in and you can um, email us and we'll pass that information over to the tutors who will get back to you as soon as possible. Um, so yeah, please join us for the agriculture Q&A in a couple of minutes time. Um, and thank you for joining us today for the countryside and environmental management Q&A. Thank you. Thank you.